All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to do something really cool. I want to calculate the determinant of what's called a block matrix, namely a matrix with little matrices inside. So for example, I don't know, the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then whatever here. So that's a bunch of stars. So this is what's called a block matrix. So here would be a size 2 times 3 or something. Um, just to make this work. And I'm claiming it turns out it's very easy to calculate those kind of matrices, the determinant of those kind of matrices. You just take the determinant of this matrix times the determinant of this matrix. 1, 2, 3, 4 times the determinant of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, which you can explicitly calculate, which you can do on your own time if you want. So I'm claiming that the determinant of A, B, C, D, it's simply the determinant of A times the determinant of C. And there's a very neat way of showing this. So first of all, let's do the special case where A is the identity matrix. So claim one, determinant of, let's say, the identity matrix of size K, B, 0, C, is just the determinant of C. And the way you do this is just by induction on K. So let's, I mean, if you want to be very clever, you can say, well, if K equals 0, there is no more identity, so we just get the matrix C. But let's do the uh, case K equals 1. Then what we have to calculate, the identity matrix just becomes the matrix 1. Here we have whatever, and here we have C. But if you expand it along the first column, or first row or first column, then we get the determinant is 1 times bunch of zeros, and it's just, sorry, 1 times the determinant of C, plus bunch of zeros, again, with the signs and stuff, and eventually what we get is, it's just the determinant of C. Now, what if K is greater than 1, then the approach is entirely the uh, same, so uh, suppose uh, true for K minus 1, show true for k, well, then let's evaluate the determinant of ik b 0 c, which is again the determinant of a matrix with k ones, some gibberish here, some c here, and 0 here. Well, it's exactly the same as before. You see, you can just evaluate everything on the first column. And what you get is, it's 1 times the determinant of still a bunch of 1s. And, well, almost B, except B without the first row. So let's call this B prime. So B without row 1. C is completely intact, and the rest is zero. And the point is, this becomes an identity matrix of size k minus 1. Which means, bam, we can use induction, and we get that this is the determinant of C. So, what we've shown is that, then, the determinant of I, K, B, 0, C is indeed the determinant of C. And in an entirely analogous way, you can show that the determinant of uh, A, B, 0, I, whatever, let's say I, M, is also equal to the determinant of A. Okay, so the question is, how can we now show that the, the result holds? So why? 
determinant of AB 0C equals the determinant of A times the determinant of C. Okay, why is that true? Well, first of all, let's just try to get rid of the case where C is invertible. Sorry, not invertible. Case one, C is not invertible. But look, if C isn't invertible, it means not every row of C is, has a pivot. So if you want, um, how can I say? Um, yeah, C is not invertible, so C has at least one non-pivot row. In other words, if you row reduce C, eventually you get a row of the form 0, 0, 0, with maybe some other pivots. But look, if C doesn't have a one pivot row, then this whole matrix doesn't have one pivot row, because on the left-hand side are a bunch of zeros. So if you row reduce C and you get a row of zeros, then if you row reduce the smaller matrix, you still get a bunch of zeros. And in particular, if you row reduce this gigantic matrix, you don't necessarily get a row of zeros. So if C is not invertible, C has at least one non-pivot row, so A, B, C, D, uh, so A, B, zero, C has at least one non-pivot row. And because it doesn't have a row in every, a, a, a pivot in every row, we get that this whole matrix is not invertible. So the term of A, B, zero, C equals zero, but this is also equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of C because C is not invertible. So in the case where C is not invertible, this is true. And the question is, what if C is invertible? Then it's actually based on a very nice trick. So, so case two. is invertible, then it turns out AB 0C, you can write this in the following very nice way. It's, I think, let's see, um, 1, 0, is it 1, 0? Or maybe let's rewrite this. So, uh, 1, 0, 0, C inverse. Let's try to pre-multiply this. If you multiply this matrix by 1, 0, 0, C inverse, which we know exists now, you get A, and you can rigorously justify it just by multiplying every entry. So I times A, which is A, which is 0, I times B times 0, so A, B, and then 0, 0, and then B, and C inverse times C, which is the identity. Um, so in other words, you do have this, but look, here's the cool thing. We've shown that if you have the identity here, then the determinant is exactly what we want. And if you have the identity here, then the determinant is exactly what we want. So all we need to do is take determinants of both sides. So then, determinant of I zero zero C inverse A B zero C that's a determinant of A B zero I. Now determinants are multiplicative, so that's not a problem. So I zero zero C inverse and determinant of A B zero C. Now, we know that, again, by one of the cases, that this gives us precisely what we want, the determinant of A. This also gives us precisely what we want, so the determinant of C inverse, the determinant of AB0C, and then the 
terminal A. But the determinant of C inverse is just 1 over the determinant of C. So this is really over the determinant of C, if you want. Okay, C is invertible, so this is fine. And then just cross multiplying, we get our desired result. Woo! The term of AB0C is the determinant of A times the determinant of C. Si, senor. Es verdad. <laughs> so, indeed, we get a very nice and easy result of the determinant of a block matrix. And it's very useful, I think, in numerical analysis because you can, um, uh, I think, simplify some uh, row reduction this way. All right, I hope you liked this little video. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.